Hey guys, Ed Bud here and welcome back to the channel. I've had to have a few days off, as you can hear, a little bit congested, certainly my chest's been feeling a bit tight, um, runs have had to be contailed a little bit, and also video making has had to be put on the back burner a little bit. But starting to feel better now, so I'm back. Sounded like a kind of slightly more wimpy version of Arnie there. So winter is certainly upon us. Wind howling outside, rain falling, gutters becoming blocked and clogged with leaves. Dangers of winter. And really in the United Kingdom that means that the temperature's sort of gone down a bit and we're looking at kind of eight or nine degrees centigrade, um, which really isn't that cold at all. But it is our job as people that live in the UK to complain about the weather. So I know over the weekend there are a few park runs cancelled here and there due to winds. The wind was quite extreme in fairness. And some of those park runs are in areas where there's quite a lot of tree coverage. So got to protect those runners. All of that's got me thinking a little bit about what gear am I going to be using over the sort of autumn and winter season? Uh, I tend to have a bit of a clear out, go through my bag, rooting out things that I don't want anymore, um, or perhaps aren't going to be appropriate for the next few months. I think as runners we tend to use gear quite heavily and perhaps the lifespan of that gear isn't quite as much as you get from a normal piece of clothing. Certainly there's a couple of cheaper end budget kind of long sleeves that I've got. Um, I've probably worn them, what, maybe 40, 50 times, but I think I'm going to have to retire them. They just don't wash that well. I think that's a consideration, really, how well do these uh, running items wash. Um, if they don't wash that well, it's not really something we want to hang on to. I'm kind of useless when it comes to deciding what I should wear when the temperatures start decreasing. I seem to be really bad at kind of figuring out how many layers I should wear, you know, whether I should wear a gigantic coat or long sleeve or, or kind of layer up with additional stuff. I just seem to get it wrong every time. I'm perhaps the person that enjoys being a little bit cooler on a run. As long as I cover my hands and perhaps some of my arms really, I feel a hell of a lot better. I just overheat very quickly. So I want to go through about five items today that I use on a regular basis when the temperatures start to drop a little bit within the autumn and winter season. So one I've particularly enjoyed very recently is this Nike long sleeve. Um, it's got a zip section here so you can kind of regulate the heat a little bit which is really ideal for me and considering what i mentioned a moment ago it's also got these ingenious kind of little glove style sections here which help to keep my arms warm i really really do like this top quite a lot managed to pick it up on uh, some type of sale i don't quite understand why it was reduced so much um, down from about 47 pounds to 27 so very happy with this it washes really well it dries really quickly too and I've noticed even on runs where the temperature has been perhaps a little milder than you'd probably consider wearing for this, it doesn't seem to get too hot or too heavy um, when you do start to sweat later in the run. Most recent run in this one um, was in the ASICS glide rides there. I think I'm up to about 60 miles in those now, so do expect my full review very soon. That run was curtailed a little bit by uh, some flooding actually. I went down through a trail area towards the end of the run, around about 10 miles. Uh, I think I hit about 7.45 per mile pace, uh, but I got to one area and it was just completely flooded. So um, I had to sort of uh, glide across the water um, as well as I could do without slipping over. The mesh of this top seems warm enough really to wear just on its own really down to about seven or eight degrees centigrade. It wicks sweat away from your skin really well as well um, without it getting too heavy. I opted for a medium in this top. Um, I'm quite a tall fellow, um, around about six foot three, but sometimes a medium in certain makes um, can be a little bit slim, a little bit too short. My arms are very long actually and one of the major sort of selling points of this was having this kind of, I don't know, glove style section here at the bottom and I thought if the sleeves aren't quite long enough it's going to be a bit useless really the whole use case of it for me is going to be out the window but it works out really well so I would suggest again always try stuff like this on if you can or if there's a good returns policy um, you don't really want to be using that but if they do have one at least you've got a bit of peace of mind about getting the right size. There was a little bit of rain later in that run towards the sort of seventh or eighth mile um, but I didn't feel that this sort of absorbed too much of it. So for an item that's relatively available in most sports stores, um, certainly within the UK, I do quite like this. You've got a little bit of an option to regulate heat and it's warm enough to wear perhaps without layers 
down to about seven or eight degrees. You might start feeling a little bit cool after that. But then again, there's always the option to wear layers over the top of this. I don't feel that even the medium on me is particularly tight. So you could probably play some other technical type t-shirts underneath this one. Back in the other t-shirt, a little bit warm in the studio with the uh, Nike long sleeve on. So I had to go back into this one. I think it's the lights. So I'm a big fan of these Heige uh, multi-purpose headbands. These are really useful when the winter time comes around. I do believe they're kind of marketed, or at least they seem to be, um, for use by women. But I really love these. Um, I've got about five or six of them now, I think, um, that I tend to utilize during the winter time. Really great, you can use them across your head, certainly as a, a chap who used to have a lot more hair than he currently does have, um, <laughs> to keep my head warm, try and regulate heat a little bit. But they also work really well with sweatbands as well. Um, and you can also utilize them around your neck um, to try and keep your throat warm um, over the course of a run. As I say, somebody who had uh, consumed more hair about 10 years ago, um, I find these fantastic to help absorb some of the sweat. Coming off your head tends to be a big issue for me. I do tend to sweat a lot really from there. And also it starts to get in your eyes after a little while, which can be really uncomfortable. You imagine throwing kind of salty water into your eyes. It's just not a fun thing to do. They're kind of slightly elasticated, so you can kind of um, use them to grip around things and also if you find that you are getting too hot or you simply just don't want to wear the item anymore It's really easy enough to kind of just stick it around your wrist there to keep it out of the way um, Rather than having to hold on to it. I think these retail for about 16 pounds each which you may think is a little bit Much for an item such as this, but I think they do some sort of multi-buy deal where you can start reducing the price down and I think they are very usable and certainly they wash well. They, uh, this one here, I think it's probably the oldest one I have. It's been washed loads and loads of times now. It's still got its elasticity and it's only starting to bubble a little bit on the outside. So you're gonna get lots and lots of use out of them. I tend to struggle a little bit with leggings and tracksuit bottoms. Uh, when we get to this time of year i do like my legs to feel a little bit freer so if i can stay in the shorts regardless of the cold um, i do like to opt for that so these nike uh, shorts with the kind of compression bottoms or the half tights really work well for me i think these are the flex stride model of their shorts um, they come down for me in terms of the compression section just above my knee, then the shorts part of the item is nice and flexible enough that it doesn't sort of impede your running gait at all. Uh, they do help to really keep the tops of the legs and the muscles there nice and warm. Uh, of course, a bit of compression there really does help in terms of that blood flow. They feature two pockets, um, one on either side, which are a fairly decent size, really. There is one um, zip kind of pocket here at the very back right side of the shorts. Um, with a zip and it's also got an elasticated um, little loop on there to attach your keys. That pocket's also lined as well, um, so I would imagine it's relatively waterproof if you're going to be using maybe an electronic key fob, um, something along those lines. Again, these dry quickly enough, they wash well and help to give you a little bit more warmth on those cold winter days. As I say, the pockets really, I guess they're deep enough, but the actual opening's a little bit too wide. Something like a phone or perhaps a gel in there, it could easily kind of bob out as you're kind of running along. Um, so to combat that, I've been able to use some safety pins here and there to try and sort of hold items in so I don't lose them. Especially when you're listening to music and things like that, it's really easy to lose stuff out of the pockets on these if you're not too careful. Not really the most convenient or um, streamlined sort of solution really, but Alas, uh, it has to be done. To get around that, I've been using this flip belt here, which again has a little bit of elastic properties and loads and loads of openings throughout the belt itself, um, which is ideal really for storing maybe your phone, keys, gels, snack bars. You could probably get a microwave meal in there if you wanted to. I'm not sure you could put a banana in there. I don't think that would fit. It has these kind of openings there. You basically can place items in and then flip the belt around so it sits just around your hips really. Again, this is my more long distance solution uh, for getting around the whole safety pin issue. <laughs> so purchased earlier on this year, I'm really loving this kind of winterized coat from Nike. It features some decent sized pockets um, either side. One of them's got a strange kind of like, I guess it must be for like an iPod or I don't think you could fit a phone into it, um, but like a little elasticated kind of pouch 
that you can fit a device into. I'm not entirely sure whether the pockets are completely waterproof. Um, they certainly seem to be lined in some way, um, but I've never had an issue maybe storing the GoPro in there. Um, it's always kept it dry and away from moisture really to protect it. In terms of uh, arm length and stuff, again, it's absolutely fine. Very reminiscent really of the long sleeve Nike top I showed you earlier on. Uh, hood's great and it's adjustable as well with a little toggle at the back. So when the wind does start coming up, you can um, put the hood on and look somewhat ridiculous. A I find this really light enough for even sort of faster paced tempo efforts. I think if you're going to go into sort of interval work and that kind of speed work, I think it would probably get a little bit warm. It is vented at the back, there's kind of like a section which um, is kind of cut out with a flap. So there is the opportunity to vent heat out of the back. I really like the zip on this as well, it will go both ways so you can adjust it so you can get the right kind of ventilation that you require. Another big boon of it really is that it can be stored very easily. You can roll this thing up and it kind of compresses down so it doesn't take up too much space if you were to place it into a, your bag or perhaps into a uh, kind of drop bag for a race. It really is quite a small item when rolled up. Last item for today really is these Stance socks. I really do love Stance. They're nice, thick, very, very comfortable socks that wash incredibly well. And I really find these gives that little bit of extra comfort when the weather starts to pull in and we're getting quite icy temperatures out there. These really do work well. I'll throw up the name of these up onto the screen for you. In terms of length, for me, they're ideal. Come just below the knee and elastic enough that they do stay in place. I mean, all socks over time kind of start to fall down a little bit, but these certainly are comfortable enough in the forefoot. Although what I would suggest is with some shoes, these are gonna be maybe a little bit too thick. If you go true to size, for example, perhaps in, in a D-dash shoe, um, this, this is gonna be simply too thick for you and cause you some problems in terms of comfort in that toe box area. So in terms of durability, I found these very good. They wash well. Um, I've only got a little bit of bobbling on this very early pair I bought. They're starting to bobble a little bit at the front, but I think in terms of all those miles that these socks have gone through for me, I think they've done pretty well. I find them to be good value, really. I think running socks, you need to perhaps spend a little sometimes. You can't be, oh, do socks make that much difference? I think they can. I think they can really affect the sizing of a shoe. I think they can really affect your comfort and enjoyment of the shoe and of the run. Okay, that's all for me for today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this little rundown of some of the items I'll be using over the autumn and winter months in terms of running and training. Let me know in the comments as to what your favorite gear is for colder running conditions. Please remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Give the video a thumbs up. Please make sure you share the video with other runners. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.